Okay, so after having done uh, many videos on conditional expectation, what we're now going to turn our attention to in this video is a uh, conditional variance. Okay, and it's pretty much the same idea. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, condition on an event having happened, and then we're going to uh, look, we're basically going to restrict our random variable down to that event. And then we're going to take the variance of that new random variable, uh, which we have restricted down to the event, basically. So let me draw a picture. Let's say here is our abstract probability space, okay? And uh, so that we have a concrete example. Let's, let's think of in terms of a concrete example, so that I'm not just drawing an empty box. So uh, let's think of the experiment where we flip a coin and we'll flip a coin, should we say, uh, 10, no, actually, we'll go for smaller. We'll flip a coin five times, so five, uh, five flips of a coin, basically. And into this probability space, I wanted to put every single uh, outcome of flipping a coin, which can get either land on a heads or a tails. So, for instance, there's the outcome heads, 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 heads. Uh, there'll be the outcome tails, 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 where you get five tails, and there'll be uh, outcomes where you get one tail, so head, tail, uh, head, tail, head, 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 uh, tail, head, head, head will be another outcome. There'll be a lot of outcomes, basically. I'm not going to put them all down. Uh, you could list all of them out if you want. Uh, the number of them that there's going to be is there are two things that could go here, for, every, uh, for each one of the things that can go in this first position, there are two things that can go in the second position, so two times two. For each of those four, um, four um, possibilities, there'll be two things here. So basically, it's just going to be two times two times two, five times, which is, I believe, 32. So you're going to have to list out 32 possibilities, basically. But um, we, can, we then know we can set up a random variable, x, which is going to map every single outcome in here onto the number of, well, let's say, should we go for heads? The number of heads. Let's let it map it onto the number of heads. Now, the possibilities for that are you can either have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So, this random variable x is going to map every single outcome in here onto one of these numbers and it's going to take every outcome and it's going to map it onto the number of heads that you got overall when you flipped the coin that five times. It's going to take an outcome and it's going to map it onto the number of heads. So uh, just to give, just to make this crystal clear, this one here you've got five heads so that will be mapped onto five by this random variable x. This one here where you've got five tails, that got no heads so you'll map that onto zero. These ones here, you both got four heads in both of those, uh, so they'll be mapped onto four, etc. Right, uh, and we know how this random variable is going to be distributed. Um, so if we want to know the probability that, let's say, big X is equal to one of these numbers here, so we'll say uh, little x, where little x is either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we want to know the probability mass function. So this is a nice simple example because um, everything's discrete, so we're working with a nice probability mass function rather than a probability density function. So this is the probability mass function. If we want to know that, well, how can we work it out? What's the probability that the number of heads you get is little x? Well, basically, all we need to know to do that is we need to know uh, how many of these outcomes actually have little x heads in. Uh, and then what we know is that each one of these specific outcomes is equally likely. There are 32 possible outcomes in here, so the probability of each one is 1 over 32. So the probability of getting a specific outcome is 1 divided by 32. So all we need to know is how many of the outcomes in here actually get little x heads, basically. So, if you've got little x heads, then uh, it's necessary that you've got 5 minus little x tails. So, 
just saying x is like, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So it's one of these numbers in here. Uh, so if you've got that many heads, then the rest of the things that, you, the rest of the flips must have been tails. So if you've got five heads, then the number of tails would have been 0. If you've got four heads, the number of tails would have been 1, etc. Right, okay, so basically, at the outcome, all outcomes that are in this subset, we say here, this, let's say this is the subset corresponding to the pre-image of this little x. So all of the points in this pink set were mapped onto little x. I, this is the set of outcomes which have little x heads. So all of these have little x heads. Okay, so basically, if you're in that set, then you have to have little x heads and 5 minus little x tails. So basically, what we're asking is how many ways are there of rearranging uh, the fact that you have little x heads and 5 minus little x tails. So to give an example, let's say little x was equal to 2. Then basically, you'd have two heads, and uh, then you'd have 5 minus 2, which is three tails. But there is a specific outcome that would be in this set, which is the set that you've got two heads. But there's also another outcome, for instance, this one. This is a different outcome in this probability space, uh, because I'm counting the order. This is the first one you threw. This is the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. The first, you know, I'm counting order. So these are different events in my probability space over here. So, um, I need to basically find how many different ways are there of rearranging two heads and three tails to get different orders of the uh, of these letters, but essentially the same number of the each of the types of the letters. Okay, so all I need to tell you is where the two heads are, basically. So, because if I tell you where the two heads, well, I want to generalize this, of course. So um, let's do it for the general x. Uh, well, actually, we'll do it for this specific example and then generalize it to the x. So if I, in this case, all I need to tell you is where the heads are, because if I tell you what positions the heads are at, then the tails are just everywhere else. So that uh, uniquely specifies a, co uh, a, a specific permutation. So these different ways of arranging something, those are known as the permutations of those two h's and the two tail, three tails, rather. So the different permutations is what we want. Okay, so... Um, Basically, how many places can I put the first head? Well, I can put it in five different places. How many places can I put the second head? Well, I can put that in four different places. But, um, because there are only four left, so I pick where I want the first head to go in the five different slots. And it's put in that position. And then there are four different slots left for me to choose where to put the second head. But basically, say I put the first head in the first slot, here are the slots, and then I put the second head in the fourth slot. That will count as different to if I put the uh, first head in the fourth slot and the second head in the first slot. But obviously the permutation, if I just fill these now in with tails, that should be exactly the same permutation. So I then need to divide by 2 factorial, which is the number of ways of rearranging the heads upon themselves. Uh, so uh, basically I but I choose where I have put my heads in specific slots now, but now I need to take account of the fact that I am taking account of where the, um, what order I put those heads into those slots, and I don't want to do that. So how many different ways are there of ordering which heads I put into which those sets now slots? Well, it's two ways, in this case, two factorial. So more generally, then I need to tell you where I put these x heads. So that's, I need 5 times 4 times all the way down to 5 minus x minus 1, which is the number of ways of, uh, that's the number of ways of putting the different heads into the five slots. So there are five slots here. I've got x heads to put in. So basically this is, the first head can have five different places. The second head can have four different places. The x head can have five minus x minus one different slots that it can go into, right? And then I need to take account of the fact that this is counting the different orders that I could ascribe the heads into the same slot. So basically, if I've now picked which slots I'm putting these x heads into, 
this takes account of the fact that I could put the first head here, the second head here, and the first head here, or the first head here, and the second head here, and the third head here. That's taking account of all those different ways in which I could put them in in different orders. So to destroy that, I then have to divide through by the number of ways of putting x heads into these fixed slots in different orders, which is that I could put the first one, uh, which is that I could choose which one goes in the first slot in x different ways, then which one goes in the sec second slot x minus 1 different ways. So basically, I get x times x minus 1, uh, and then it goes all the way down to 1, basically, and that's just x factorial. So this sum here is denoted as 5 choose x. Okay, and basically what it means is 5 factorial over x factorial uh, times 5 minus x factorial. Because when I take 5 factorial and I cancel it by 5 minus x factorial, then I get uh, this thing here, above here. Okay, right. So, um, basically, that's the number of ways of, um, two of, of, that's the number of, uh, permutations of x heads and 5 minus x tails. So that's the number of things in this um, in this set of x heads. So this is 5 choose x and then what we need to do is um, just put in the probability of each, uh, well the probability of, um, of well the probability of each one of these which is just uh, 1 over 32. Okay, so that tells me uh, the probability that, uh, that tells me the number of these options which satisfy that, and then the probability of each one is 1 over 32. Okay, right, um, so I uh, will cut this video here and we'll discuss, uh, we'll continue our discussion in the next video.